everyone. Uh, today what I'm doing is taking a look at how we can uh, seamlessly migrate a VMware virtual machine uh, in the coming months a Hyper-V virtual machine over to a Microsoft based platform. Um, so essentially non Microsoft to Microsoft based virtualization uh, is what this procedure is gonna gonna work on. Um, and the idea here is that uh, all we really need to do is pre-install the drivers for the hardware that Hyper-V is going to pre present to our virtual machine. Um, so what I'm working with today is a Microsoft uh, Windows 2008 R2 server, uh, this guy here. Uh, it's running on a uh, vSphere 6.0 cluster. And uh, I've already pre-installed the, uh, the Hyper-V tools. Uh, or the Hyper-V integration services. Uh, it's the one that I described uh, up in my article uh, on my blog. And I uh, went ahead and told it, go ahead, don't, you know, don't do a reboot now. Uh, so that's where this guy is. Uh, on top of that, I've had it replicating for a while now uh, with Zerto uh, from my VMware uh, cluster to my Hyper-V cluster. And uh, what we're going to do today is go ahead and uh, do a test failover uh, from one platform to the other so that we can uh, essentially see if everything's going to come up and work right. Uh, so before we do that, let me uh, show you inside of the virtual protection group. Um, one of the key parts about Zerto uh, for disaster recovery, migrations, whatever you're going to use it for, is that we want to help you automate the network changes that need to happen so that that virtual machine uh, can be effective at its new location. Uh, so. I'm not going to bother much with all these other tabs here. Uh, the one we are going to look at is the recovery tab. Uh, the reason we're going to do this is basically so that I can show you what the IP address should be uh, after we do the failover. Um, so to keep things simple, I, I use the same settings for both test and a move slash failover. Uh, I'm going to try to assign it 172.17.1.96. Uh, as you can see right now, the virtual machine should be on the 172.16 subnet. Yep, 16.1.71. Um, and so the idea is, is that we need to switch from uh, the, the 172.16 to the 172.17. To do that, we're going to have Zerto uh, do that. And then just to make it even easier, uh, the main thing to know is that if it ends up with Google as its DNS servers at the other side, chances are everything worked good. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cancel out of there. I'm going to go ahead and start the test failover. Uh, the only one we're going to do is the old 2008 R2 server. It's going to go to Hyper-V. I've got Hyper-V open down here. Uh, as you can see, that virtual machine is not running in the list so far. So let's go ahead and hit next, next, start failover test. We'll hop back into uh, Hyper-V. As you can see, it already created it by the time I got over here. Uh, and one of the <clears throat> one of the tools that we're going to use to monitor this is uh, on the uh, Hyper-V server itself. Uh, so I'm not logged into VMM. I'm actually logged into the Hyper-V host, and I'm typing in the name of the VM that we are working with here. And this command should show us that. Um, Basically, there's some Hyper-V services that have to happen in order for Hyper-V to be able to talk to the virtual machine and do all the fun things that it does. Uh, so right now, as you can see, the virtual machine is barely started up. It's, it's actually not even up yet. Um, and if I run this command to check the integration services on that virtual machine, you'll see that Hyper-V uh, has enabled several of them. Uh, but the primary status is blank. And uh, the one that we're most concerned about with Zerto, at least for, for this article, is this key value pair exchange. Um, this is kind of like a message bus. So what this allows Hyper-V to do is take a message for the virtual machine and pass it into the virtual machine without using TCP IP networking. Uh, so it's kind of a backdoor, so to speak. So let's see what we got going on over here. Go ahead and go 
through that. Uh, remember I did a test failover, so that essentially is just a crash consistent copy of the VM. It's not application consistent, hence the message. Um, but now it looks like everything is kicked off. If I run this integration tools again, what you'll see, and this is to be expected right now, because the Windows services on this VM haven't started, uh, but basically what it says is that the tool or the integration services are enabled, uh, but there's been no contact yet. So now if you keep a look over here at our 2008 R2 server, uh, you'll see a pretty familiar screen. Uh, it's essentially a Windows update screen, right? And the updates that it are installing uh, is those the, the, the new drivers that we installed with that DISM command. Uh, so essentially when, when you ran the DISM command, it injected new uh, drivers into the operating system that Windows hasn't really applied to the real system yet. Uh, we said no to restart. And so what it just did there was the initial Windows updates to inject the, the drivers into the actual running image on your server. Uh, it gets to about 30 some percent. You've seen it reboot. Now it's going to come back up, finish up. Uh, sometimes it reboots one extra time. It really just depends on whether or not you have any other updates that were kind of pending. Um, but basically, it's going to finish up Windows updates. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to rerun the command in the background here to see if my integration services are working. And uh, then after that, we'll log into the Windows machine and we'll see if it got our 172.17 IP address. All right, looks like it's going down for the second reboot. And I haven't fast forwarded any of this. I uh, wanted you to kind of see it in real time. Uh, it, even with as much as I'm talking, it takes about five to 10 minutes for this to happen for a VM. Uh, and so it should be ready to log in this next time. Uh, we also gotta come over here and check our tool status, our integration services. It's probably been one of the hardest things for me as a, uh, as a, you know, historically a VMware only kind of technician, consultant, whatever. Uh, the idea of not calling these Hyper-V tools has been incredibly hard. <laughs> All right, so looks like she's about finished up. There we go. All right, so it says we're ready to log in. Before we do that, let's check our integration services. Uh, and that's what we expect to see right there. Everything is in the OK state now. Again, biggest one being key value pair exchange. We want OK to be there. Uh, now what we can do is we can come over to the console, log into this virtual machine. And obviously the first thing I want to do is check my, uh, my, my network card. I want to see whether or not I have uh, my 172.17 IP address. So if I click on details, there it is. So 172.17.1.98, and there's my Google DNS servers. Uh, so this VM uh, did exactly what we wanted it to do, and everything is working great. Uh, another thing that you can check, so this is just kind of extra if something doesn't go right, um, I've showed you the tool to check to see if the Hyper-V stuff over here uh, is doing what it should do. Uh, there is some services in Windows that we can check as well, just to see if the Windows side is doing its thing right. Uh, props out to uh, Kevin on our support team at Zerto uh, for showing me all this stuff. Um, and what he says we gotta do is look for this guy right here. So data exchange service. Uh, if that's not running, not started, not able to start, whatever, uh, essentially, think of this as a telephone system, right? You you have one end of the telephone here, you have one end of the telephone over here. Uh, those guys are what talk to each other in order to get messages in and out of Hyper-V. Uh, to the guest, I should say. Um, so that guy's working, 
that guy says true and okay, you're going to be able to re-IP a virtual machine. If either one of those are not working, re-IP will not work. Uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, you should be ready to migrate over to uh, Hyper-V or Azure. Uh, this works equally well for both platforms. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, leave me a comment on the blog or, uh, you know, chat to me on Twitter or one of the other social media platforms. Thanks, everyone.